Hey there, my name is James. I'm a nursing professor and I am creating a web tutorial for my students on Parkinson's disease and I know that uh, there are many other nursing students out there so I want to create this uh, generic video for anyone and hopefully it will help you if you are in a nursing program understand these uh, challenging concepts because Parkinson's can be pretty difficult to understand but I want to break it down into more manageable information so if you at all want to make a comment, feel free to do so. If you want to ask a question, again, please feel free to do so. If you enjoy this video, please click like. Um, if you're at all on Twitter, I am on Twitter at nursing underscore prof. Each week I try to post an article or two about the topic that we're going to be talking about in class. And feel free to share anything with me. That, that would be great. I love connecting with other nursing students and nurses around the globe. So let me get rid of this information right here. And let's talk about Parkinson's. Before I begin, I should mention that I obtained this information from some very reliable sources and I want to point them out because I found them rather interesting to read, easy to read. So if you're at all struggling with your information in nursing, uh, go out there on the World Wide Web and see what is um, going on in your community. So because we're in Canada, I definitely went to the Parkinson Society of Canada where they have a lot of great valuable resources for anyone who has Parkinson or anyone who knows anyone with Parkinson's, talking about the signs and symptoms and how to manage the disorder and the disease and helpfully asking or answering any questions. I also checked out the Mayo Clinic, which is a very reliable, valid source. So as nurses, or future nurses, you'll need to verify where your patients are getting their information. Uh, you may find it helpful to look at the Lippincott Nursing Manual of Practice. I really enjoy going to this book. It does an excellent job of um, condensing a lot of information, and it delivers content in the nursing process. So it breaks it down into ADPI, Assessment, Diagnosis, Planning, implementing and evaluating. So let's go back to what is Parkinson's. I'm going to be talking about the cause, the symptoms, how we as nurses implement um, ADPI. And so let's begin. Parkinson's uh, affects the neurological areas of the brain that are responsible for motor movement. And so what it's thought, uh, it's caused or it's thought to have ca been caused by several things. It's it just could be genetic predisposition. It could also be caused by chemicals such as pesticides or herbicides. And the end result is that there is a reduction in the dopamine. And that is responsible for muscle movement or normal muscle movement. So normally these things travel across the uh, nerve synapses. But because there's damage done to the substantia nigra of the brain then this dopamine is reduced and unfortunately movement disorders develop or begin to be displayed. Now this is not an autonomic disorder so there's nothing in the body that's attacking itself so there's no scan that we can do to determine that someone has Parkinson's. What, how we go about determining someone uh, has Parkinson's and making a diagnosis is we just simply ask them about their signs and symptoms and usually their doctor will prescribe um, dopamine medication and if their symptoms improve they will be diagnosed with Parkinson's. What they need to know is that they'll be on these medications for life and they may need to go up on these medications. Now I realize this is not a pharmacology class so I'm not going to spend a great deal of time talking about medications but I, it's important to link them together. So. Let me get rid of these here. Let's look at what clinical manifestations you might see in a patient with Parkinson's. Quite often you'll be familiar with um, what we refer to as a shuffling gait. So there might be shuffling of their gait, postural changes, a slight tremor, uh, a mask-like face, so uh, a loss of being able to express oneself because, again, the facial movement muscles are affected by this lack of dopamine and potentially a hunched over or change in position. I should also mention there will be stiffness or rigidity, stooped posture, potentially weight loss because uh, of the medications or the metabolism uh, of the muscle movement and also difficulty with chewing or swallowing. Uh, also, they could have akinesia, and whenever there's an A in front of something, it stands for absence. So, akinesia, absent of normal movement, and that underlying fine tremor. Now, thinking back to um, the, syn the synapses, 
This does not occur all at once. This lack of dopamine doesn't occur all at once. It occurs slowly. So it's kind of like turning off your faucet or turning off the sink. It, it doesn't just shut right off. You're just slowly turning it, slowly turning it, slowly turning it. So in the beginning, you only have a few signs and symptoms. And if allowed to progress or, or the dopamine allowed to further decrease, then you have an exacerbation or an increase in your symptoms. Important to understand um, and recognize the symptoms because your patients may report them and you'll need to advocate that they be screened. Now, that being said, um, screening or diagnosis, there is no diagnostic test that can be done. It, uh, what we do is we evaluate the, the, we, the patient's um, or client's past medical health history and their story or their subjective symptoms and we put together a reasonable belief that this might be Parkinsonian or because these symptoms could be caused by other disorders so we rule other things out and we'll test them with um, a medication. So that in addition some other um, clinical manifestations I did not mention are bradykinesia also known as slow movement, um, resting pill rolling tremor. So this is where they may have a a fine motor tremor in their hand or they may move their thumb and fingers together and it looks like they're rolling a pill. Uh, any rigidity in their muscle movements. We already talked about the mask-like face. Some struggles with their um, articulation, so any kind of dysarthria, difficulty speaking, and or change in their handwriting. Their handwriting could get smaller. That's called macrographia, uh, where their, their penmanship gets actually smaller. Uh, nursing management. We're going to start with assessment. You're really going to watch and screen these patients because they're at risk for uh, complications such as uh, swallowing difficulties um, or falling uh, uh, and injuries uh, subsequent to falling. So in our nursing assessment, we're going to want to look for any kinds of signs and symptoms uh, that would seem like uh, Parkinson's, so any shuffling gait or fine motor tremor or changes in handwriting. You're going to want to do a very thorough neuro assessment, so assessing the cranial nerves and their balance or their gait, the Romberg test or the cerebellar function tests. You'll want to assess their speech or clarity of speech and articulation and look for any signs and symptoms of depression or altered family um, coping, especially if they already have the disease and are, are known to have the disease. In terms of the next step of the nursing process is diagnosis. There's many diagnoses that uh, Parkinson's patients will demonstrate. A few of these include impaired physical mobility uh, related to bradykinesia or slow muscle movement, rigidity or tremor, imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements related to difficulties with chewing or swallowing, impaired verbal communication, constipation, or perhaps um, we're always asking you to do a psychosocial nursing diagnosis. In, perhaps the patient may experience ineffective coping related to new physiological limitations or the progress of the disease or loss of independence. So the next step would be planning um, or an implementation. So we'll set some goals and then we'll go ahead and we'll try to um, establish some interventions that may help them. The most common one is improving mobility. So it, I just want to put a shout out here to uh, Mary Ann Wilson, who is on YouTube. So our patients can either go to the gym or they may be even able to stay at home and open up YouTube and participate in an educational um, physical therapy program that's been uh, published by this uh, nurse, Mary Ann. Thank you so much for publishing this. Um, so this helps patients maintain and strengthen muscles while at home in the comfort of their own house. You also want to talk to them about um, taking warm baths to relax muscles, taking frequent rest periods um, between um, extensive exercises to minimize fatigue or frustration, and um, nutritional status. We'll want to plan some interventions for nutritional status. So teach the patient to think through um, swallowing and to close their lips and chew. Um, again, while they're not experiencing these signs and symptoms, um, they're great, but as the disease progresses or their dopamine levels fall, they will experience a lot of problems with talking or chewing. And so you, this is something you wanna pay particular attention to if they're having any problems with swallowing. You wanna get them a swallowing assessment or uh, discuss this with a speech language pathologist um, this ties into our next nursing intervention, uh, maximizing communication ability. 
you would want to potentially suggest a referral to a speech um, language pathologist and uh, encourage them to be very compliant with their medications um, ex and, and emphasize exaggerated pronunciation and speaking in short sentences, uh, reading things aloud in front of a mirror and tape recording the process. Um, also, an another nursing diagnosis that we talked about was constipation. So what interventions would we do for constipation? Well, we've talked about fiber and we've talked about fluids, but also fruits and vegetables and um, mobility. Uh, interventions for strengthening their coping ability. Again, potentially uh, making a referral to a counselor or getting emotional support outside. Um, encouraging open communication and discussion of feelings. Uh, that would be very helpful in establishing a therapeutic client relationship. Last but not least, you want to teach them a few other things. Again, this list is not all inclusive. This is a very quick highlight video for Parkinson's disease, so I'd like you to go back to your textbook. But patients will often experience um, dry mouth or um, urine retention. And so you may have to assess them for urinary uh, retention. You may have to talk to them about how we go about managing dry mouth. You want to encourage them to avoid other medications that will decrease the um, level of consciousness of the brain uh, that would further cause uh, problems with constipation. These medications for Parkinson's are also hard on the liver, so you'll want to teach them to monitor or maintain follow-up appointments with their doctor to evaluate the health of their liver. What sorts of lab tests would tell us about the status or health of our liver? I'm going to help or hope that you hit pause and think about what are your check engine lights for your liver. Or what are the diagnostic lab tests that tell us about our liver? Feel free to go ahead and make uh, your responses known in the comment section. Teach patients um, that if they experience any freezing or exacerbation of their symptoms, they need to seek uh, attention from their family doctor um, as quickly as possible. And um, there's lots of resources and support groups out there. Help them make a connection with that. And last but not least, the nursing process ends with evaluation. So are they experiencing um, any problems with their muscle or their physical mobility? And hopefully not. And is their nutrition reestablished? Are they eating uh, smaller meals more frequently uh, that are higher in protein? Are they not experiencing any um, significant weight loss? Are they able to communicate with any uh, without any difficulties, are they taking breaths before they speak long sentences, unlike myself in the moment? And are they asking questions and uh, connecting with resources and supports, whether that be family, friends, or online? Um, okay, as nurses, I just want to point out that um, your questions are, your patients are going to have a lot of questions. And I pulled this from the Lippincott Nursing Manual of Practice. And, oh, actually, no, I pulled this from the Mayo Clinic. So be prepared and ready to answer a lot of questions if for someone who is newly diagnosed. They're going to have a lot of questions, as would you if you were diagnosed with this disorder. So try to anticipate that and be ready with these questions and be extremely empathetic. If you've got any questions yourselves, feel free to post these um, underneath this video. Again, if you enjoyed this and found this informative, please feel free to hit like. It's always nice to hear positive feedback. And if you've got any suggestions for how I can make these videos better, please feel free to type those in as well. Thanks, take care, and, and good luck in your nursing careers. Again, if you want to find me on Twitter, I'm at nursing underscore prof. Thanks, and take care. Good luck in your nursing studies.